people have just have been asking, we I never know some motor movie star and all them really. Yes, we do a whole heap of things, keeping in the context and the confines of how we view, we have a world view, and that is really what we deal with. How we get this role here, really? The British name Haile Girima, he's from Ethiopia. He is a, he, he teach at Howard University, and he decides he's going to make a movie about slavery. And what happened now, he was looking for the, the characters them to fit the, the writing where he do. And, have somebody tell him, or someone, some sisters in Washington tell him, say, well, if you want to shank him, I forgot Jamaica, go check a youth named Mutabaruka. So I decided to come to Jamaica, come meet me, and we meet and we talk. At first, the movie the name Nuno. And you know, if you watch the movie, you know, Nuno is the, the main character, the female character, the mother in the movie. Well, <clears throat> We take it from there, so we decide to say, all right, where you want? And where me want? He said, well, he want to find some places where he can shoot, you know, a riverhead, a church, and all these things. So I think what me and I need drive him all over the place and look for, for sites and places where we can shoot the movie. Anyway, we decide to say, we're going to do it because we read the script and we say, it now do nothing outside of where we would have really want to deal with. So I go back and a couple of months after I come forward with the crew, Cuban crew and black American crew, and it was shot in Jamaica. The, 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 the part of the movie that was shot in Jamaica is when the, you see the birds start to fly from the dungeons in Ghana, and they fly from the cane field them in a Jamaica. And then now you see me and me and the cane piece, and this sister named Shola, was supposed to be my girlfriend eventually in the movie. That movie was shot mostly in Trelawney. Very, very, a lot of people don't even know, say so it looked like Jamaica, but it's Trelawney, it gets shot in a whole heap of piece and a whole house when it did it. Anyway, the movie took about, I think when it did it, I shoot for about six weeks. Yeah, about six weeks I shoot in a in a in a Trelawney and in, in St. James. We shoot some in St. James. And it, it worked out quite well. It worked out quite well because it became eventually the most successful independent black movie ever made. Yes, it, it, it went I remember we go to um, California in a this multiplex theatre. We're, we're, we're owned by the, the, the bridge in there where, where, where do basketball. And it's showing there for about a month. And I remember distinctly that when they have the opening, we are going to the theater and the person at the door said, no, we can't come in. I said, why we can't come? He said, we don't have no shoes. <laughs> that the people, they run, come there now. I said, no, 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 he was the star of the movie. And right away, the brother almost come like he's a king and go inside and now. So, we go all over the place, we go to Africa with it, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a New York, I mean it's sold out. Everywhere it goes, it's sold out. Every, it becomes like a cult thing, where everybody starts to deal with the thing named Sankofa. Sankofa is a bird. And what it really means is that you're going back to bring forward. You make history teach you of your movement in this time. Yeah. And it became almost a world where most conscious Pan-Africanists and Africans start to use because of the movie. Now, it's really weird because I never know, say, it did go so hard for do. And I'm going to tell you why, it's like you had a scene, which is weird. I was sitting in a movie all the while, cut, 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 cut. You're in a scene and, for instance, now we are run go up a hill. And then all of a sudden you hear a cut. He said, what happened? He said, why? You want to say the, the sun gone up, the cloud gone over the sun. You have to start over. And when you wait till the sun come up and then you run go up, he said, cut. He said, why? You want to say the man the outside of the frame. <laughs> I said, let me start cuss now. He said, boss, watch out. You have to be a blood clad slave for you. Because you have been a run up a dog in this hill almost about 12 times already. 
cut, 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 cut. You better do it right, do right now. So I worry about them little thing they involved in the, the making of it and how we start to understand how movies made. And sometimes you have them say, talk straight. Look straight ahead and talk. And you talk, and you cut out, you, you talk. And really and truly, when you see the movie, it's somebody you talk to. Because them also cut the person by themselves, attack, and separate, and you by separate. And when the movie comes together, it's like the town have a conversation, and the person where you attack to never every day they when you attack. You know? So all of them little things there, we understand and we realize. And a lot of the words them in there, I mean, actually put them in there. Because they they, they can't they know the Jamaican dialect. And what they want to do, which is very unique to the movie, they too, is that. He never want all of the slaves them to have the same dialect. Because all of the slaves them, all of the Africans them never come from one place. So I was allowed to keep my Jamaican dialect. That is why they have writing underneath it to tell you what I say. And then you have other people in like Norway, like Nuno, which was the chief lady. She talked in a fair Ghanaian accent and thing. It was wonderful. It was wonderful to see a, 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 a movie about slavery that never have a white man rescue the slave. Because most, most slavery movies, you see, a white man is in the mix. The only white man them were in the mix of that, get dead in the movie. And apparently, the two of them apparently was two Jamaican white people too. So it, it kind of break a lot of grounds in how people view Africans on the plantation because it was about Africans on the plantation. Them, what they believe in, them love, them understanding, and them quest to liberate and free themselves from the white plantation owners. You know? And it, has, it helped me a lot because when you read the, the, the script and you ask highly, so tell me something, how that come about? And I might show you certain things where you never even know. So upon the plantation, these things was happening and these things was happening, you know? And it helped, it helped really strengthen my understanding, my consciousness about the experience of the African them on the plantation. When you hear people, I don't know what they talk about, but I was still in that slavery, you know? It's foolishness. You don't know what slavery is, you say that. You don't know what slavery is. On the plantation, for God's sake, why are you still in a slavery? Because if you had known what was happening on the plantation, a whole heap of women would not go on here so now, like say, we are idiots. You know what I'm saying? And I think that movie is a very inspiring movie for African people to watch, to truly understand what was it that was on the plantation that moved these Africans. That even at the last part of the movie, the, 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 the lady with named Shola, the African who I did with themselves, I'm a girlfriend in the movie. When the man beat her, he said, she could get out the African out her and Christianity and this and this and that. And she started to move amongst me and find out, say, but wait, this is a serious thing. She started to get militant. And that to show from passive resistance to active resistance. And it shows you, say, she really get active. To the point that she chop up and I'll see a master them and run. And I was the one now who was pushing the thinking, pushing the thinking, making sure say, the African them move according to plan. And Nuno, which was the main character, was the woman who bring forward the, the African retentive elements upon the plantation. She was able to gather the African them and show them what is what and what is not. I will for the white people them with Freda because if she thinks that they have some powers, which the African them and this plantation thinks that she have powers. And she did have powers. The power is a psychological movement of a people that you can get them to move and burn down plantation without any thinking that why somehow we are gonna say no and somehow we are gonna say yes. Even though in the plantation you have that too as the movie show you. You have man who did stand up 
for the white man. And you didn't have people who say, no, we don't have that again, you know. But in the last, all of them recognized. Said the whole away was in the same boat together. And we have to bust it out, you know. And that is really something that I find that a lot of slave movies don't show. Them don't show the resistance of the Africans. Pan the plantation, the planning. Them don't show the love of the African. Because obviously this woman was in love with this rebellious slave, Shango. And she, um, can, she can't understand why I'm being so. You know, the first part, she brings some food for him. As usual, it's a water from the plantation. And he might tell her, I say, watch her. Why don't you know, put some poison in the food? And she'll say, you're mad. Put poison in the food and you'll kill this and kill that. He said, so what? That's how Shango look at it and say, so what if them dead? We are afraid of we are dealing with. And then now, she says, so tell me something. So what do you think you are eat? I just see a mass of food. I can't see him get vexed with her and spit out the food. You know? But in all and all, it helped. The movie there, I think, helped. And I'm very glad that it started to show again. Because a whole heap of youth right now can see it. A whole heap of youth, whenever I have a debut. Because 30 years ago, a whole heap of youth was like 10 years old, 7 years old. Then I watched Bugs Bunny and them something there. Now, there's something of substance. And I think, say, everyone should have carried them children for go watch it. If you don't have certain little look in there. But the African make sure same don't show no, no blood in there. And him don't show no ranchy sex scene in there. You know, and that is really something where I'm old fast too. So we really feel good. It's one of our one of the achievement in my career sort of where I really feel proud of that I did make a mark not only in my poetry but in acting that people can see what I'm saying. I say it in my poetry but you see it in the movie and it's really something else.